<clears throat> Wonderful. I see your slides already up here. So, um, yeah, again, we have as a next speaker a person I don't really need to introduce. It would be quite insulting to introduce this person because everybody knows Mark Tibul, of course, as one of the prominent character in uh, optimization. So uh, the contributions Mark made to our field are numerous. He not only worked on continuous optimization, he also worked on stochastic optimization, and he actually also was one of the first persons to propagate the use of risk measures, which is not something many people know, actually. So I think Mark can be very proud of his track record. He is always very active with our community, involved in many of the leading journals as either associate editor or editor. And personally, I learned Mark from the last years as a very humble and nice character to talk with. So I really appreciate that Professor Tibul accepted our invitation to give the second talk on this online day of continuous optimization. And the floor is yours, Mark. Please take it. Take it. I don't hear you. Are you muted, perhaps? Okay, now I'm not. Muted. Ah, here you are. So thank you, Matthias, for uh, your <laughs> nice introduction and uh, for organizing this uh, one day. Of course, it is unfortunate that we cannot uh, do that in uh, in person, but uh, that's what we have for the moment. So we have to content ourselves. So, so thank you uh, uh, for uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, to speak. Actually, I will make a talk which is relatively short. Um, so this is on, uh, and this is a nice continuation actually after the talk of Eddie. So maybe now we uh, we will after this one we'll make a, a faster, faster Lagrangian based method, I guess. So uh, uh, this is uh, uh, about uh, Lagrangian based method in convex optimization, faster Lagrangian based method, and this is a joint work with uh, Shoam uh, Sabah that you all know. And by the way, if you have any questions and you can ask him, he will be uh, more than happy to, uh, to answer. So he, I, I think that he's in the audience. I hope so. OK, so um, well, many of you that know me uh, uh, for uh, many years uh, have known that I've been always fascinated by duality in particular, but the uh, Lagrangian method also. And actually, Lagrangian method, of course, are, have been on the market for uh, over 60 years, uh, or about 60 years uh, since the uh, famous work of uh, Hesternes and Powell. And over the years, the more recent decade, I mean, they've, been, they've become very popular in, uh, in uh, I mean, once upon a time, they were completely uh, almost ignored uh, after the, uh, the, the 80s and the uh, many contributors, in particular, uh, uh, Berstekas that has promoted the, the use of Lagrangian based methods. But there was, uh, there was completely uh, uh, um, forgotten in favor of uh, the so-called anterior point methods. That was a, the big revolution in optimization at that time. You know, it's like inflation. It's like Hollywood. Uh, sometimes things are working uh, great, and then all of a sudden they disappear, and then they are coming back. So anyway, Lagrangian methods are back on the market, and because they are very flexible, they are uh, useful. They can handle complex, uh, constant problems, and so on and so forth. And so today I'm going to make a modest contribution here. In particular, it will be, uh, of course, uh, only in convex optimization. And the purpose of this uh, work with uh, Shoham that we try to understand why it's so difficult to analyze the complexity or to, uh, to perform iteration complexity analysis of uh, Lagrangian-based methods. And uh, with this in, in, um, in what's going on here? It doesn't move, okay. So with this in mind, uh, uh, essentially, I uh, mean, the uh, main goal was, uh, first of all, uh, trying to, uh, to understand why it's so difficult to analyze the Lagrangian-based method. But then, essentially, we came up uh, with uh, uh, a further goal by uh, uh, leads us to, uh, to, uh, to simplify and to unify, and on top of it, even to improve uh, uh, the result on the, uh, on the uh, uh, rate of convergence of uh, uh, Lagrangian-based methods. You see, I mean, most of the people that are familiar with the, uh, these methods, for example, in the complexity analysis of Lagrangian-based methods, usually you are getting uh, uh, what are the so-called ergodic type results. So you are proving results in average 
and you are not uh, proving in general results which are for the, for the uh, whole sequence. So that was something which was bothering us. But anyway, so with that uh, in mind, uh, we, we discovered essentially two main objects. The first one is the, uh, well, I'm going to, uh, to talk about uh, this uh, primal algorithmic map. Actually, we couldn't find an appropriate name, but we are so happy with it. So we decided to call it NICE. So this will be the, uh, the, um, the first uh, uh, objects that I will describe. And then um, um, with it, we will, uh, uh, I will describe um, a framework. I mean, it's, it's, it's an algorithm, but it's more than an algorithm. It's kind of, of black box. I will explain that in, uh, in the beginning and in the end in particular, how you can use it in order to, uh, to, uh, to analyze this method. So this is a framework for faster Lagrangian methods that we call the flag. And I will describe uh, the results. And I will show you, of course, that all the iconic uh, methods that you are familiar with, and probably many more, can be uh, put in that, uh, in that uh, framework. OK. So what is a model? Well, the model will be uh, the uh, uh, linearly constrained convex optimization problem. So we want to minimize the function psi, which can be non-smooth, and it's uh, 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 it will be, uh, we'll deal with the uh, convex and strongly convex case. So we, uh, we put the sigma strongly convex uh, function. So of course, when sigma is zero, then we are back to convexity. A is our linear map, which describes the constraint. And uh, well, of course, we assume that the feasible set is uh, non-empty. So it might look at a very uh, 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 simple problem, but in fact, basically it encompasses almost uh, most uh, convex optimization model. And I'm going to go through these models because it's very important also in order to, um, to lead to this uh, uh, primal proximal map that uh, I want to, uh, to introduce. So let me just briefly, uh, since all the people are expert in this audience, uh, show you, for example, uh, two particular instances of uh, uh, P. For example, the block linear constraint model where we have uh, two, uh, two operators, okay? The most familiar is when you use one of the operators is the minus identity and P zeros, and you have the, the so-called composite model, for example, FU plus G of uh, uh, AU or something like this, but this is a, a bit more general. And so obviously this is just uh, the same model. It's just a block model, which just defines the vector X uh, in two blocks U and V and the function to be the, the sum, okay? Now, at this juncture, I would like already to emphasize that uh, in, for the block model, we will not need to assume that the function is uh, uh, strongly convex. We'll assume only one function to be strongly convex. That's uh, just uh, uh, as a by Of course, you can add more. It's like, you know, when you are in the kitchen, you, you can ask more ingredients. You can add more ingredients. For example, the common one is, of course, to assume on top of this of the, uh, the original function, which was extended value, you can add a smooth function, and then you can go ahead and continue, uh, extend the model. So what I want to say is that the, the linearly constrained model is really rich and it, uh, it can cover tons of uh, applied uh, uh, situation. Of course, I'm not going to describe all this. Okay, so let me introduce a few notation. So as usual, uh, we attach a multiplier to the linear uh, uh, constraints here, and we get the, uh, the so-called uh, Lagrangian with, uh, for problem P. And then if we penalize the, uh, the uh, Lagrangian with the uh, 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 X minus B norm square, and rho is a penalty parameter, you get the so-called augmented Lagrangian. As we know, the, the augmented Lagrangian also is a, is a result of applying the prox uh, on the dual, uh, whichever way you want to look at it anyway, we're not going to use these, uh, these uh, things. Our standard assumption, of course, is that we assume that there, is, there exists uh, uh, a saddle point, okay? And uh, of course, uh, as you know, in the convex setting plus adequate uh, constant qualification, we can uh, uh, guarantee this uh, um, to happen. Okay, so the starting point is very simple. The starting point is that Whichever way you look at a Lagrangian-based method, you are always looking at two equations, okay? The first one is some types of primal algorithmic map, which formally I, de I described with uh, P, uh, X and Y as the input, and X plus as the output, okay? And the, the, uh, the second step is always a multiplier update, okay? Here, for the sake of 
being comprehensive, we have also introduced a scaling parameter. It is known that sometimes it can help in, in the uh, convergence property, especially numerically, to add some kind of scaling uh, mu in on top of the row is a penalty parameter. So usually in general, the, the basic method is with mu equal one, but uh, there are some variant where we can go up to almost two uh, uh, in order to improve this uh, multiplier of that. This is not really important. This was just to cover the, uh, to cover this case and not to generate another paper for that. Uh, so, um, so basically the main observation is that when you look at a uh, Lagrangian based method, we are going to describe a few of them uh, very soon, then it will always depend on this uh, a, a algorithmic map, okay? So what is this algorithmic map? Basically this will be a minimization method or a type of optimization method that you will be uh, uh, choosing in order to, uh, to minimize uh, your augmented Lagrangian. Okay. So that's what I'm going to describe. Uh, so that uh, we'll uh, have uh, just an idea of what uh, what is this primal algorithmic map. So let's start with the, the very basic uh, model, which goes back to, uh, as mentioned at the beginning, Estenes and Powell. So you want to minimize uh, the augmented, the basic Lagrangian scheme for minimizing a function over a linear constraint is that given X and Y, you update your next point, you do an argument uh, of the uh, augmented Lagrangian term, and then you update your uh, multiplier by this equation. So what is P in that case? P would be exact, this, this will be described as the exact minimization when you applied it on the augmented Lagrangian, okay? That's uh, obvious. Okay, as we know, practically, of course, minimizing an augmented Lagrangian can be as difficult or even more difficult than the original problem. So we should look at for some type of approximation, a very well-known approximation of that is the uh, proximal linearized augmented Lagrangian. So what, you, what do you do here? Essentially, you take the smooth part of your uh, uh, here. Okay, so all this is uh, your smooth part. Uh, then uh, you can uh, uh, just apply the uh, uh, proximal gradient step. So you do a, a gradient step around the X point of this uh, smooth part, and then you regularize as usual or with a weighted uh, uh, matrix, a positive definite matrix, this is a proximal regularization as you show up. And so this is the, um, uh, and as you, the multiplier of that, of course, remains the same. So in that case, your primal algorithmic map is no, nothing else but a proximal gradient applied on the augmented Lagrangian. Okay. Now, if we go to, uh, um, this is not, uh, they're not good at Zoom. They made, uh, they made something which is very nice, but you have to change every time your, uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to complain because it's free, okay? Or mm -hmm. almost free. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, uh, let's go to the, uh, to, the, um, to the block models, which are a bit more interesting because we can design more interesting uh, uh, method in that, uh, in that case. Okay, so we have this uh, block model as we described before. This is the usual uh, Lagrangian part of the block model and this will be the penalty uh, part, okay? So we can exploit this uh, block models. What, uh, what, how can we exploit it? Well, we have the so-called uh, uh, ADMM, which was born out uh, uh, with the work of uh, Glowinski, Morocco, Goba, Mercier, and many others, not going to cite, but this is already uh, almost uh, 50 years old. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this was forgotten for many, many years. And over the last decade, it has, uh, I mean, the literature on that has exploded. Uh, it can be easily said that. Okay, so what do you do here? So given U, V, and Y, you update your, uh, your new points, your primary points U plus and V plus, and your uh, dual uh, Y plus by doing alternating minimization. So you take, because you see, you, can, you want to exploit some, some sort of separa separability which exists in that problem. It's not full separability because the functions are separable, but they are connected with the constraint. But still, you can exploit it. So you, uh, you do a ghost side iteration here. Uh, no, nothing else than that. So you fixed uh, your V, you minimize respect to U, and then having minimized with U, you respect, uh, you minimize respect to V, and then you update your multiplier. So basically, for this classical method, 
the primal algorithmic map would be just alternating minimization of the augmented Lagrange. Okay. You can do even more. Um, as we know, these steps might be di still difficult to implement because you have to minimize the function here with a quadratic term. So that's not a trivial uh, task. And so what you do is you do approximation. So what is approximation? This is the proximal linear ZDMM. Okay, so what you do is just, again, in similarity with the, uh, the proximal gradient, you do a proximal gradient for each of the block. Okay, so here you linearize the uh, smooth part and you regularize with some uh, uh, PD metrics, a proximal metrics, and you do the same for the uh, V variable. And so you get the alternating proximal gradient applied on the quantum product. Okay, so I guess we have uh, uh, these mechanisms which are uh, quite clear what we mean by this uh, uh, primal algorithmic map. So what we try to do is just to, uh, to capture the main ingredients. You know, you see, this is like, uh, uh, why is this uh, red stuff is still, uh, is still here? Uh, okay, see, fine. Uh, so uh, to try to capture uh, in one single uh, 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 definition what we need to analyze all these methods because okay we, we don't want to, uh, to repeat all the time and and in the course of doing that essentially we ended up by also being able to uh, to get better results so that was a nice uh, a nice surprise okay don't be uh, afraid this is not uh, may look as complicated but it's not. So what is a nice primal algorithmic map? Basically, uh, we, it's, we, need, we, we have two parameters here, rho and t, which depend on the, on the index t, okay? We def, uh, these parameters are uh, defined by, I mean, they depend on the, on, the, on the problem data. So if you have a convex problem, sigma equals zero, then the, the parameter rho will be uh, fixed and tau will be also uh, identical to one, otherwise that would be, dynamically change with the T. So a nice algorithmic map is a map that we applied on the augmented Lagrangian and generate, given the input uh, Z lambda, generate the next uh, Z plus. If we can find a number, you can, uh, you can forget, you can plug this number one if you want. This was in order to, uh, just, I'm just telling you the, uh, the story behind this number, this number is to handle this, uh, the so-called scaling that we can do in the, in the dual uh, step, but this is not really important. So, and two, uh, if we can find two positive semi-definite matrices, so that this inequality holds. Okay, first of all, before I, I, I go quickly on this inequality, let me just uh, mention this uh, uh, expression here, because okay, so delta P is the difference between a point, between U and V and U and W in, the, in square, you know, with respect to a positive semi-definite matrix P. Okay, this is just uh, for, a shorthand notation, and of course, if there is no matrix P, then that will be uh, just delta, meaning the P's identity. Okay, what this is measuring essentially, this is essentially trying to measure the dynamic of the augmented Lagrangian from one given po input point to the next point. Okay, so we have this uh, uh, um, nice inequality, uh, which uh, this one is connected to the primal. This one is, is connected also to the primal, and this one is essentially a mixing the uh, both. So, let's see what, uh, having this, now I can introduce to you the, uh, uh, the flag, okay? So basically, this is a, what I'm going to show you, this is not a formal algorithm, this is really a framework, because this is a sort of black box. So you have your input is a problem data, you have to identify, and I will illustrate this uh, very, uh, 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 I will give you a recipe at the end of the, uh, of the, of the story here, so that you can go to the kitchen and uh, implement. Uh, so you pick, you define your problem, so yeah, that, that means that you have your uh, function, you have your operator, and you have your uh, sig, I mean, you know if it's a convex or not, con or strongly convex, and you have, you decide uh, what is your uh, uh, nice algorithmic primal map. So you start with T zero, mu is a parameter, as I mentioned, this is for the scaling, the delta between zero and one, and rho is the penalty parameter. So you start with your initial point, 
and this is the algorithm. So what do you generate here? It might, look, it, it might look complicated, but it's not, okay? First of all, we compute, I will discuss this in a minute. We compute this lambda k, which is given by this expression. And as I mentioned, the rho k depends on the dynamic. So the, it depends on the strong convexity and convexity. And then you update the, se the sequence as follows. So these two, the first two steps are the classical steps, meaning what I, I call classical. You apply the primal map, okay, that you choose, and then you update your multiplier. The last step, which is a mixture of these two steps, but be careful because this is a bit more uh, 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 involved because the lambda by itself is also uh, involved in the XK. So anyway, this convex combination of this two point is going to play the uh, role of acceleration here. And now how about the sequence TK? Not surprisingly, the sequence TK is uh, actually, this is kind of funny because it, it fits, uh, everything fits together, the P here, okay? In the convex case, you will use P equal one. In other words, this equation becomes just TK plus one is, uh, is your next one added with one. And the strongly convex case, that will be exactly the nested of sequence. Okay, that will be the, the so-called, uh, that will be the, 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 the quadratic equation. And now what is amazing is also that the P will correspond also to the order of conversions. We could have made it also in formally uh, in, even in the paper, but we didn't do that. But that was just a, just a, maybe an accident, whatever. Can I, can I ask something, Mark, around this slide? Sure. Or to interrupt. So what sure. is this, just to understand again the parameters. So what is again sigma and what is P? What is P? P and P. sigma. What is the difference between P and sigma? Between between T and sigma. P P P P. P. The P. Ah, the P. The, the, the P here. The yes. P. The P. Uh, well, uh, you you could you could have expressed this as a function of sigma if you want. Okay. That's exactly what I said. Yes. But this is more. This is this is nicer. You will understand also when you will see the result. Uh, this, is, this fits very well to uh, to talk about the the convex case and the strongly convex case. Okay, so in a minute. But you are right, yeah, we could have uh, written a, a, an explicit formula, very, that's very simple, in terms of the sigma. But I mean, it's, uh, it's so simple, so we, we thought that it's better to keep this uh, uh, explicit. Sorry. So first of all, uh, it's not difficult to see that if I plug TK equal one for all k, then I go back to the classic very basic Lagrangian method, okay? So that, of course, that's because everything collapsed, okay? The lambda k becomes a y k, the x k becomes a z k, and everything is there. Okay, so now what if you, you, may, you may be asking, like uh, Jerome asked uh, Eddie about the, uh, the uh, if there is a physical uh, dynamics uh, uh, behind the, uh, the model that he has been analyzed uh, uh, on his, uh, Algorithm, algorithm before. And so you may be asking from where uh, uh, this is coming from. Okay, well, this is, of course, it's not, we are not reinventing the wheel. We are always building on the, uh, on the works of uh, many others. And of course, uh, uh, on the work of Nesterov, first of all, and then some of the work that I did with uh, Freddy Oslander in 206 and myself. And in fact, to be honest, uh, we don't have a geometric insight or explanation. This is a this is a truly uh, 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 funny cocktails of uh, of these things. It's not uh, there is no. I don't have any. I am not going to uh, try to uh, to justify myself. We let's say that we are very lucky, <laughs> or we have been very lucky to find the appropriate ingredient to make this cocktail. Okay. Well, it's not completely out of the blue, but uh, still. Okay. So the TK is playing. Uh, the key role in the acceleration of the primal map, but not only. I mean, the the convexity and strong convexity has also playing a, 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 a very uh, important role here, and uh, uh, and the uh, the uh, both the, uh, the the choice of the uh, of the, uh, the penalty parameter and the prox parameter okay, will de will depend on it. Okay, and so what what is Particularly uh, 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 intriguing here is the introduction of this auxiliary variable, which combines both the primal and dual variable in the, through this equation here. Okay, and this is exactly what enables us to get 
the non-ergodic rate of convergence result. Okay, I insist on that because that was our motivation. Also, we we I mean we you know we how we say in French, uh, uh, l'appétit vient en mangeant. I don't know how to you uh, to translate exactly that in in English. But uh, when uh, when you are uh, you you see that things are working, then you want to get more. Okay, so that's exactly what uh, what we did here. Okay, so all we need, well, I mean, at this point, I want to summarize here. All we need is essentially, I mean, when it is just to identify to make sure that you have a nice primal algorithmic map. Once you have done this, meaning that you you can identify these two matrices P and Q uh, in in you're done. It, it's over, I, and I will. I will, of course, illustrate this, and you get the convergence result. Now, regarding the analysis, I'm not going to bother you with uh, technical details, but I want to insist on, again, I mean, many of you have, have been working in that area, maybe, or maybe not, I don't know. But uh, if you have been reading papers, as I mentioned at the beginning, analyzing Lagrangian-based method is not easy. And usually the proof are very lengthy, non-trivial, intricate. I don't know how you want to, to look at them, but it's completely, I mean, if you want to do co iteration complexity of uh, any kind of this, of this method, you have to, uh, to work uh, uh, all kind of uh, uh, manipulation and, and things which are not completely trivial to say the least. So our analysis, thanks to this uh, uh, framework, will depend essentially on two lemma. And by the way, I'm not going to go through the proof, but each, each proof is about half a page. Actually, uh, basically, the first lemma is really just technical. What is important is the second lemma. What the second lemma is, without entering too much in the, in the picture, what the second lemma is, is giving you here is essentially measuring the dynamics of the uh, 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 function values, not function values, Lagrangian, augmented Lagrangian values which are changing with the, uh, at each iteration in the in terms also of the uh, the parameter tk so this is, this is essentially the central uh, uh, object in the analysis and as i said uh, the proof of these are uh, uh, quite uh, quite simple after you have seen the proof <laughs> okay so um let me show you the type of results that we can get here. Okay, of course, we, uh, as uh, uh, mentioned previously with Coriala here, we don't deal with asymptotic result. We deal only with non-asymptotic rate, meaning uh, iteration complexity. And so we are going to use uh, two classical measures, the function values uh, uh, and the feasibility violation in terms, uh, in, in all case of uh, xk minus, minus p. Okay, so we can, of course, think about other measures and the literature has been done. We can measure the, uh, the distance from xk to x star. We can measure to successive iterates and so on and so on, okay? And when we discuss all this measure, we have to distinguish between the original produced sequence and the ergodic sequence. As I mentioned, uh, many results have been obtained with the ergodic uh, uh, or the ergodic type, or most of them. And I'm not going to mention, I mean, if I had to mention all the results, then I will need to, uh, uh, so I, I just mentioned some of the important ones, uh, of course, uh, Antonin and uh, Antonin Chambol and, and Thomas spoke. Uh, he and Yuan also have been promoted this kind of analysis, Monteo and Schweiter and many more, okay. Um, regarding non-ergodic, okay, there are some results, for example, of the type uh, of one over N for the two uh, uh, successive iteration or uh, even for the distance of the optimal set of over one over N square, again by Antonin in the strongly converse setting. And I would like to mention one result, which is maybe not very well known, which is non-ergodic, uh, and which is a one over N rate of convergence, which is a term in terms of function values and feasibility violation, but it's for a very specific linearized ADMM. This is a work by Sushan Lee and uh, Lin of uh, 219, okay. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to to talk about this because this doesn't fit in our, in our framework actually. So that's another uh, interesting uh, question. So the main two results that I'm going to give you, how, many, how much time I have? Yeah, I just wrote you in the chat. So if you would like to secure some uh, discussion time, five minutes, because we started a bit late. Five so, minutes. So, yes. You didn't steal me uh, a time here. I, I wrote you in the, well. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, you know, I'm, uh, don't forget, uh, you, in the Middle East, we always bargain, whatever is. Uh, no, no, fine, I, I'm going to finish. Uh, uh, okay, so, but I started at... Uh, we started a bit later, that's why we can... So I have, oh, okay, I have, but I have, uh, I have uh, 40 minutes, including questions, right? Yes, so until 10. 30 would be your, your speaking time, so we can now talk five minutes more and then have some discussions. Five minutes, plus five minute discussion, right? Something like that, yes. Ah, okay, fine. That's... I will make it the same way. No, I mean, just announcing results. Okay, so basically, uh, for uh, okay, the first result is the non ergodic function value and feasibility variation rate for. Uh, strongly convex case okay we and i insist on that okay the strong convexity is crucial here is order to get the over n square complexity result okay as you see here is a constant you can take it here multiple the multiplier so you have explicit bounds here in terms of the, of this expression here for both the function value and the uh, uh, but as we know in mathematics there are always a, a price to pay if you want to get uh, something. If you want to get um, a non-ergodic rate for the convex case, then you go back to the O over one over O of one over N. That's still a result which I'm proved over, to the best of my knowledge, what is known so far. Uh, uh, so this is also some science based on the non-ergodic. Needless to say that the oh, flag is very versatile, and if you want to get ergodic type result, you can you can do it. It's mentioned. You can have a look at the paper. Okay, all you have to do is just to get rid of this uh, uh, auxiliary uh, function. So, let me just mention here uh, uh, very quickly that for the black, mo I mean, for the black model, we we have to uh, for the black box model, sorry, we have to. Uh, uh, um, to, uh, to look at the, the model where one of the function is only convex, not both, only one of them. Okay, I'm not going to go through the definition. The definition is essentially the same. What you do is just as you can see, you have a block, so you have two and and P2 and Q2, and this is a definition of the primal map. I'll let you uh, discover all this uh, by looking at the, uh, at the paper. Can you hear me? Because I have... Uh, something which seems to be wrong with the internet. I hear you. I hear you. There was a bit was a bit shaky in the meantime, but it's all right now again. Okay, very good. So uh, so of course I'm not going to show you that on on the screen, but uh, and you are very welcome to see all the details in the paper. All the iconic Lagrangian based method admit a nice primal algorithmic map. So this goes from Starting from the augmented Lagrangian, going to the ADMM, proximal ADMM, proximal in RSM, Chambol Poc method, proximal Jacobi, P, predictor corrector, and, and you can add many in the list. In each classes of algorithm, you can identify the metrics P and Q, and therefore uh, uh, you have a nice primal algorithmic map, and therefore you can apply the, uh, uh, the result. You can go beyond that, as I mentioned at the beginning. If you want to have also to introduce a smooth function in your uh, problem, okay, here H will be the smooth part of the function. Then you can do also the same. You can generate the P and the Q. You can prove that you have algorithmic map and so on and so forth. So basically we have a very uh, 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 flexible and unifying tool here. And so let me just uh, end the talk by this uh, uh, epilogue, which is essentially the recipe. Okay, so what is the recipe? Your recipe is you have your model, you formulate it as, as, as model P, meaning you have to identify your data input, which is your function, your operator, and uh, uh, your right hand side describes the constant, whether it's convex or strongly convex. Okay, and then this will determine the type of rate you will get. It will be non ergodic anyway. But it will be either very fast, one over n square, or one over n. Okay. Then you de you de you define your iterative step, meaning you define your primal step. This is your choice. Okay. You, all you have to do is just to show that it's a nice primal algorithm. When you do that, meaning you determine delta and the two matrices, you are done. 
you can apply your theorem one or two and you have the result. You don't have to go to the, uh, to the proof anymore. That's completely irrelevant, okay? That's, these four steps are, are what, these three steps are the three steps that you have to do in order to, uh, to use this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, framework. Okay, so actually this, uh, this is going to, this maybe uh, has appeared maybe yesterday, I guess. I don't know, maybe, maybe not yet. I know it was on the uh, Gary proofs. This is a paper which is, uh, which is uh, going to appear in Science Journal Optimization uh, probably this week. And um, there are many more uh, things in the papers that you can uh, discover. And so thank you. Uh, I'm done. Thank you very much, Mark, for this very, very fascinating talk. Amazing. Uh, good. As I said, we have a bit shorter time of discussion this time, just to be a bit somehow in the, into the, in the schedule. So please ask your questions now. Yeah, Heidi? Matthias, yes. yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mark. And, uh, and uh, I have the same question that, the, that the Jerome asked me uh, just before, but <clears throat> maybe there is some uh, interpretation of this kind of uh, algorithm in terms of game theory. Don't mm -hmm. you think? My, my intuition, you see, is that in, in terms of game theory, you can think, you see, there are two players, one which, one which minimize, the other which maximize. Mm -hmm. Just one variable, you see, the primal problem you minimize, and the dual variable you maximize, okay? So you are two players, one playing <coughs> one against the other. You listen to me, Mark? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening to you. Okay, okay, okay. And so, so I have intuition, you see, that what makes the acceleration is a clever behavior of the, uh, the agent, you see. They don't react to, to the current situation of the other player, but they, they anticipate, you see, the, the, the next position of a player, and they give a reaction to this. Okay. So that's inertia, you see. It's a, here, maybe inertia is, is anticipation. Anticipation of, uh, yes, extrapolation. You see, extrapolation here means anticipation of a further position of the other player. Yeah, but well, I don't know. I mean, if you have an explanation, then good. I don't, I don't. I don't, but, uh, but, uh, is I don't see, I mean, this is not exactly, uh, we are not doing extrapolation here. But, uh, this is but, much uh, more complicated. This is much more involved, uh, Eddie. I'm sorry. I mean, this is not uh, really extrapolation. The extrapolation is coming just at some steps of the. It's. It's. I don't know. I mean, if you have an explanation, then fantastic. For, for I, the I, dual, I, for the dual, for the dual, you do that, isn't it? What? For for the multiplier. Yeah, but the, but there is a, there is something which is a. a yeah. Okay. Let me. Uh, well, why is this is not working anymore? Does it want? To just to go out. Um, if you go to the this is a bit more involved here. Okay, so you have this step here. Uh, let me try to see this, all this here, which is a mixture. You see, this is a part, the dual variable, this is the primal variable. And now here, the acceleration step is essentially. A convex combination of this, but the, with this one, which is by itself a mixture with this one. Okay, so this I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I don't see. I. I. I personally do not see any any uh, any possible explanation. But of course, that would be most welcome because, as I said at the beginning, I don't have any. Okay, so if you have, okay. if you have any, then that would be fantastic. Okay, but maybe there is a cognitive interpretation of this. Uh, yeah, the question is, what does it help? Okay, so also, uh, I mean. But the reason is that there has been several uh, recent papers, you see, who, who uh, consider acceleration of a DMM method, and where the acceleration came from this, uh, uh, in the interpretation I gave, you see, anticipation, you see? The player don't react to the current position of the other player, but they react to the anticipated position of a player. This is a clever, you see, a, 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 a best clever attitude, you see. Mm -hmm. You pay to what the other player is going and you, you, you react to the position of the... Uh, yeah, okay. 
but here, I mean, here's a man, here's a main point was to build one single framework which encapsulates all the others I understand, I understand. In, one, in one single way. I mean, that's, uh, that's a big that, that, That's very nice, that's very nice, but it would be much nicer if you have a cognitive interpretation of it. <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> you, are very, you are very welcome to give one, <laughs> if you have one. Okay, well, thank for the sake of time, unfortunately, uh, I think we have to move on. Uh, so thanks again, Mark, for this very inspiring and, and thank interesting you. talk. It was very, very interesting, I have to say. And uh, yeah, so uh, our next speaker is Professor Koradia Kartisch.